about <laughs> Alexander. <laughs> What's happening? How are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm great. Slightly jet lagged. I just landed from Manchester, mm. which was really fun. Doing some writing. Went to the, the Man City game down there. Mm-hmm. And now I'm back in my room, North Hollywood. Feeling good on this. Oh, Monday, I love that. How was your time in Manchester? It was great. I got to say, I love, I love the UK. Mm-hmm. Like, just like the culture and the way people like, act and go about their days it just feels so refined and nice do you love the uk more than canada no see that's a tricky question apples that's, and oranges that's you really you put me in a corner here i i have to say i like canada more oh, I, i've gotta but listen blink your twi- blink your eyes twice if that's false <laughs> Listen, listen, this is just going to be our little inside joke, our little inside secret. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no, no one's going to find out. No one's going to say anything. We're good. We're good. We're good. Not a soul. I'll be murdered by everyone in Canada. <laughs> no, no, no. They're too nice to be doing stuff like that. <laughs> Dude, no, I, I thing is, they're so different. It's like Canada is like a nice in between of like America and Europe. It's the mm-hmm. weirdest thing. It's and everyone says it there too. Like before I could even say it, they were just like, Kevin's like the middle man. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so what's funny, I was just in Detroit uh yesterday and I was looking over to Windsor and I was like, it literally looks like South Detroit over there. Yeah, it's Canada's quite bizarre, honestly. It's so much of it looks and feels exactly like the states, but then when you really get into like the way people like act and like sort of more of the Canadian culture, it's a lot more European. Mm-hmm. It's quite bizarre. But I love it. I miss it, kind of. I love that for you. Well, you know, you can always go back and visit whenever you feel the need to, right? Exactly. I can go. I, I, I find myself not doing it enough, though. I, I, um, I feel like as an adult, you realize, you say that you want to do things. And it's like, oh, I need to do this and I need to do that. But in reality, you never end up making it happen. Never. I, I can't tell you how many times me and my best friend have been like, next week we're starting the 20 day ab challenge mm-hmm. you know like, like every week and it's been like this for like a year we will never do it yeah because i feel like getting abs is not fun like oh, uh, is it worth it though like not being able to eat what you don't want to eat you know what i'm saying it's it's absolutely <laughs> from my studies in the field it's absolutely not worth it your studies in the field <laughs> your studies in the field let's talk about your writing session that you had uh over in manchester how did that go Oh man, that was great. So actually Manchester was just the, just the soccer game or football game that I went to. I'll be killed for saying soccer. Um, I flew over to Oslo to do my writing sessions and I love it there. It was my second time in Oslo. And each time I go, I work, uh, we do a couple sessions and I just leave, but it's so fun. And people there are so nice. And it's, can I also say Oslo is so expensive. Is it really? It's like more expensive than LA. I went to Subway. Subway. I got a foot long. I know I'm not supposed to be talking about the writing session, but this is just a passionate subject for me. A foot long and a six inch. And it was $29. Did you get it? Because I would have left it in that subway. See, I got it. They were all made. Like they were right there. I couldn't just like look at her and be like, never mind. Mm -mm, I am that person. Be like, hold on one second. I got a call and walk out and never walk back in. I am that guy for so real. So bad. I was with my manager. We laughed about it for so long. Did you make your manager pay for it? Because I would have. I honestly can't remember who paid for that one. <laughs> I think he paid for it. <laughs> so right quick, back to the writing session. Sorry, yeah. Back to the writing session. Do you feel like you get more creative, I guess, writing in Oslo? I honestly do. I think there's a there's this weird thing where it's like, I live in Los Angeles and it's like my home. And it's like, as soon as I leave, I feel like just this door opens for new kinds of creativity. And it's like, I'm not scared about saying something that like my, you know, my songs are about someone. So it's like, all of a sudden it's like, I'm far away from the entire situation. And it's just like, I can just say whatever I want. I think it's honestly more of a mental thing, Mm. but it's, it's like free to fly halfway across the world and like be able to do the same thing in just a completely different environment. It just, 
I don't know. It feels different and nice. As if the person that I guess you are singing the song about can't necessarily hear from thousands of miles away. I think so. And it's it's like they would they'd hear it anyways if it came out. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's almost like a mental block sometimes being here. It's it's such a weird thing to like describe, but as soon as I leave, I'm just free. I can just like pretend that I'm completely different person and right from that perspective. And it's it's very emotionally freeing, actually. I was about to say, do you think it's an out of sight, out of mind situation? Totally. I think I basically just sit there. I think it really is like I sit there and just pretend like my LA life doesn't exist and just write as if I could say anything. And I could always say anything. But it's, I think really it is a mental block sometimes. Do you ever think about, clearly you do, but I wanted to, I want to get your answer on this. Do you ever think about like what the person will think or what the person will say or what the person will feel about when you're writing about them? All the time, like all the time. It's I've had this conversation with my friends actually, because I'll write songs that are like very personal and touch on very specific things Mm -hmm. so it's like there's no secrecy between me and whoever whoever that specific song may be about and I'll I'll sit there and be like I don't know if I can release this I'm like this is kind of terrifying because what if they come back in my life and then they sit me down they're like Alexander like my friends will be like Alexander like you're an artist like you're allowed to write about your own real life experiences your truth my truth. And they can take it however they want. And I remember one conversation very specifically about that. And I was like, okay, you're right. And then I ended up putting the song out, but it was, um, it is, it can sometimes be very difficult because I, I don't know. I'm a people pleaser. I don't like mm-hmm. to offend. Mm-hmm. I don't like to create drama. And ironically what I do sometimes can create drama. <laughs> so it's really just the balance of being like, okay, I'm going to stay true to myself and just like, hope that the other person understands that this isn't like a place of like attacking them this is this is a place how i've how i've this is my story my side of it exactly exactly. heads up i've never done that actually (laughs) really do you feel like well here's the thing only reason i ask is because do you feel like it will break up the the anxiety that you get releasing something about someone else so (laughs) In my brain, it's more if I bring it up and then they're like, absolutely not. Like, how dare you? Then I'm like, oh, my God. So, like, the the idea of just, like, you know, ask for forgiveness instead of permission. Right. Well, in the situation, I'm like, hey, I'm just giving you a heads up. That doesn't mean that I'm going to change the song or not necessarily release the song. I'm just telling you what to expect. And I'm not naming you by name, but I just want to let you know if this situation sounds familiar it, it, it is. You know what I mean? Honestly, yeah. I mean, there was one funny, well, funny now, specific situation a while back where some of the songs I was writing, very unrequited love vibes. Mm-hmm. So the person I was writing about didn't even know that I liked them. Mm-hmm. And it put me in a super weird position because I was like, do I tell this person the song is about them and then simultaneously then tell them that I like them? Or do I just play dumb, put the song out and hope that everything goes back to normal? (laughs) What was the situation? Uh, I, you know, as one does, fell in love with uh, one of my very close friends and knew for a fact they did not like me back. Like we were in a full relationship, but like, unfortunately the thing with feelings and like all that good stuff is you don't really have any control over it. Right. Right. So I was writing songs about it, you know, as I do, like I feel emotion, write about the emotion. And then all of a sudden I had this whole body of work that was about this person that had no idea that it was about them. And I had to sort of, navigate that one kind of carefully yeah 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 but i ended i actually did i ended up telling them that was one time i did i have so many questions number one i want to know how did they react when they found out it was about them well actually it really? was yeah very good um how do i say this without saying like too much they 
reacted super well. We're still actually really close friends. Um, and I took that opportunity. It was almost like as soon as the like veil of like secrecy was gone, I could like move on. It was the most bizarre thing. And so now I'm sitting here and I'm like, I'm chilling, you know, I got new love life drama. But as soon as that, that part of me that was like so scared to say anything was gone and it was all out in the open and like breathing, it was like this moment where I could be like, okay, like I can actually like walk away from the situation now and just like keep my friend and not be tortured over it. Well, think about how just an outsider looking in, think about how flattering it is to have a whole body of work <laughs> being, being written about you and feelings and a situation. I would, how, how could you be mad at that? That's the, that's the other thing. I'm like, exactly. It's like a, it's a compliment. It's just a whole Absolutely. bunch of songs about like how you're so great. It made me die inside. I would love if I lived in someone's head rent free. Because that person literally lived in your head rent free to the point that you wrote a whole body of work about them. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. I guess I've never really thought about it like that. Yeah. It's like on the flip side, I'm like, have I ever lived in someone's head rent free? We'll never know. They've never told me. <laughs> I mean, listen, you just got to keep your ear out to the songs that are out there and see if the situation sounds familiar. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God, that'd be hilarious. I've like vowed to myself that I will never date another artist because that will just be like mayhem an emotional mess it would be an emotional mess and a very public mess <laughs> <through> <laughs> yes. Music. yes i want to know what made you i guess bridge songwriting and tiktok together oh my god i mean tiktok is just a crazy app mm -hmm. and it's like so unpredictable and beautiful and it's like i've been you know writing songs for years and years like far before TikTok was a thing and then all of a sudden this app came out when it first came out everyone was like what is a stupid app like it, it was really hated and then over the summer of 2020 it like changed into this short form video app that like people loved and I'm not exactly sure when that change happened or how it happened but it did and so I was like oh, I might as well just like try posting on here and I remember I posted one video and I woke up and I had like 700,000 views. And I went, oh, it's like there's power in this app. So then I just started like trying to post some stuff. And it's like, it's so quick because some videos will get like, you know, 5,000 views. And then some will get like 2 million. And you just don't know what's going to happen or what's going to do well. And then one day I was sitting in my car. And I don't know if you've seen these, but like car videos for musicians are so big on TikTok. Mm -hmm. like so many artists just sit in there kind of like I wrote the song about this and here it is and sometimes it'll go so crazy um and I did that I just tried it I sat in my car and I, I was putting a song called House of Cards which is a very it was the first song I'd ever put out or really written honestly that felt like really authentic to me finally mm -hmm. and like I finally had people in my corner and on my team like that just like liked me for me and I wasn't trying to like push me to do something I didn't want to do and I wrote this song, super vulnerable. I sat down in my car. One take, I just like, the song was about falling in love with someone that is horrible for you and not knowing how to walk away. And I woke up the next day and it had like gone viral. I was like, there's no way. I'm like, this app is crazy. So put the song out and then just realized I just got to use this app as much as I can. And I love that you were able to use that to your benefit. I mean, it's the first time ever that artists, really, no matter the size of the artist, can, can fully promote themselves and each artist really has an equal opportunity to to do well because mm -hmm. it's like the entire world is like your a and r right. <laughs> essentially and you get instant feedback on something that you're putting out which has exactly great it's crazy it's never it's never been like this before and it gives it gives artists with 10 followers or it gives artists with 10 million followers very equal opportunity right really leveled leveled the playing field isn't that crazy when you think about it like how this app literally can tell you if this is the song that should be out or tell you that people aren't feeling it or tell you that you know maybe maybe i should add something else to this like there are literally so many songs out there that have happened because of this app 
so many. It, it's true. It's really crazy when you look at the last year and like the charts too. Mm -hmm. Like you can tell immediately, even just looking at the charts, when TikTok started to become a thing. Mm -hmm. But it's also interesting though, because on the flip side, people get very caught up in like, if this song didn't blow up, like I don't want to release it, like it's not going to do well. But then you, there's there's that part where you still have to stay true to your artistry and like like you know artists make music because because like we love to make music and mm -hmm. there's a song that you really believe in even if it's not you know going viral on tiktok you still have to have enough like belief and be like okay i'm, st I'm still gonna put this song out because like this is the one that means something to me it's it's an interesting balance and you got to keep it like healthy you know right by still following your dreams to just chasing numbers Ooh. although the access to the numbers is really convenient <laughs> Absolutely. Speaking of things that you're like really passionate about, tell us about the song "When You Love Someone." Yes, this is this is the song that uh, I was referring to about falling in love with a friend. Mm -hmm. um, when you love someone, I wrote it a few months ago, and I remember getting to the studio and sitting down and basically just like bawling my eyes out. It was like it was very drama drama moment for me mm -hmm. um main character moment i sat down started crying basically telling everyone like there was me and a few other people in the session and i was just telling the story and i was like i don't know what to do like i don't know what to do because i cannot control like my emotions like there's i can't just switch it off but i can't you know continue to let, lose a best friend over it right and really the thing is this friend lives back in toronto mm -hmm. And that's sort of what the verse is about. Um, and, and we really, truly just told the story as it happens. Because if you, if you listen to the song, the verses are very talky and very descriptive. And I remember sitting down being like, we shouldn't even try to find some clever way to say this. We should just tell the story. Because the story itself is quite interesting and, and probably quite relatable to a lot of people. At least that's what I've, I thought, because it's inevitable. Things happen. You fall in love with people that don't like you back. Mm -hmm. But... The song came out, we wrote it very quick. I think it was literally just an hour. And I like, we sat down and listened to it. And that itself, just having that song written was so, again, it's just like freeing to like Therapeutic. hear it. Therapeutic, yeah, that's exactly the word. Therapeutic to just like sit there and listen to this song that I wrote about this thing that's just been like, was just killing me. Mm -hmm. It was quite a crazy thing. And sometimes I think about it where I'm like, if I'm feeling really bad, I can just run to the studio, write a song. It'll make me feel a little better. Like, if you don't write songs, what do you do? Yeah. You listen to songs. Therapist. <laughs> or therapy. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I write songs and go to therapy. It's a nice mix. Absolutely, because it's almost like you are getting it, uh, like, you know, double, if that makes sense. Double. Dude, exactly. I mean, I started therapy when I was probably five years ago and i will never not recommend it to anybody i'm like go like you, don't think you have, like you don't think you have problems just wait until you go to therapy oh absolutely <laughs> it's almost like peeling back an onion when you speak to a therapist no it really is because then you start to realize like why you react to certain things why you feel certain things or why certain things make you sad and like how to fix them and just being able to talk to someone freely that's going to help you instead of judge you bro I feel like I would be the worst therapist because I would be low key trying to help you, of course, because that's my job, but also low key judging. Because if you come into my office talking about talking about some stuff that went down, your boy is going to be feeling some type of way about it. I'm only human. You feel me? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm sometimes I'm like, how are you? like, I'm like, you must be judging me. Like, you, like what, I'm, what I'm in there is I, sometimes I say certain things. And I'm like, I know, like internally, you're like, I don't get that. But like, you're not going to say that. <laughs> Like, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? You feel me? <laughs> Tell me, what are you working on next? Oh, man, I've been just in the studio so much writing, essentially, what's the, what I'm going to put out as my next project. Mm -hmm. And all very sad music. I'm, I'm a very sad boy at heart. And it's, it's all essentially about unrequited love and, like, heartbreak. And I love it. <laughs> Well, you think about like how relatable it is to write a song about someone uh, you like and not liking you back or not, not even knowing that you like them. That is so relatable or just like people and their feelings, these emo songs. It's so relatable and people just love it. Like it's it's 
it's people's lives. Oh, absolutely. And liking someone that doesn't like you back, everyone's been there. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I feel things very deeply as a human. I'm a very deep feeler. And there's like a minuscule thing that could happen. And I'll be like, mm-hmm. well, I'm going to write a song about that. And it, it's also been funny bringing it back to TikTok. It's like, I'll write songs in my room about certain things and I'll post them, not really thinking that much of it. And then I'll just get like tons of people being like, you must release this. And I'm like, it wasn't even a thought in my brain to release it. I'm like, I just had to like get it out. But that's essentially what, what the whole next project is. It's, it's unrequited love and breakup. Sad. But, you know? I feel like everybody's going to love it too. <laughs> Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, bro. Well, I appreciate you jumping on Zoom and chatting with us. Thank you so much for this. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. It was great fun.